welcome to the West Ham Transfer Rumour Show. We've got a little bit to get through this evening as some new names being linked to the club, with one in particular catching the eye. Some familiar names as well. So basically we've got some new rumours about the old rumours, but we've also got some players we've been linked to years ago. So despite Tim Stiden arriving, despite a new head coach, we're still being linked to one or two players. We're going to be discussing all that in tonight's show. I appreciate over the last 24 hours or so all the talk is around the transfer budget or lack of, but Gonzo covered it earlier on today and you don't need us both covering the same subject on the same day, so I'll discuss it on Wednesday. Plus, I'm pretty calm about it, but I would like to discuss it anyway. However, we're parking it for now and we're focusing on the transfer rumours because the one we're kicking off with is Ismail Coney of Watford and I believe this transfer rumour because I think we could do the centre midfielder, but also it's been reported by extra employee as well as Athletic. So we've got two credible sources behind the reporting. Coney is currently representing Kanda in the Copa America, 22-year-old centre midfielder who joined Watford 18 months ago for €8 million. Euro. Now, I'll be honest with you, never heard of him. Never heard of him. I am not clued up on my Watford players. So, I've spent quite a bit of time researching him because at Hammers Chat recently we've invested in Wise Scout. You guys have kindly been putting up with all the adverts and all the brand deals, and myself and Gonzo have decided to try and invest in Hammers Chat ahead of next season. So we've invested in Wise Scout. So now when I say I researched him, I don't mean YouTube clips. I'm still using football reference as well for the statistics and an overview of him. He looked impressive with his numbers. But we can now go into Wise Scout and watch HD footage of him with all these actions and games. So I've been watching him dribble, I've been watching him tackle, I've been watching him pass, I've been watching all these highlights in a Watford and Canada shirt this morning and he looks bloody good. For a player I've never heard of, I've got quite excited by him. This is the second time it's happening. Why Scout's dangerous for us here at Hammers Chat. Um, it's happened with Coney, it happened with Calafiori as well, the Italian centre back. I went on Why Scout and started watching him and what, looking at all these defensive actions. And I quite liked it. I'm liking Coney too. I think his passing from the middle of the pitch looks really good. Quite adventurous as well. It's not. Simple crab football sideways stuff. It's through the lines. He's trying to break it. Quite often played that pass between the full back and the centre back of the opposition team, trying to get his winger in behind as well. And he was often involved in the build up, getting the assist of the assist, if, if that's a thing. Is that a thing? I think it's called a hockey pass, isn't it? I think do, do ice hockey count those ones? To be fair, Coney might know, representing Canada. Um, but he looks good. Now, all I can go off is the highlights. I haven't actually watched him play 90 minutes. I've just been looking at all these individual clips on my scout, but he looks really good. The profile of the player looks really good. He's just turned 22 years old as well. Now, I have been looking to see what the transfer fee is roughly, what the rumoured transfer fee is, because I, I, I like to know. It gives you a bit of a rough idea. For players I know, I can sort of guess to some extent, but when you've never heard of them, I'm, how am I meant to guess what the rumoured price fee is? Now, he's also been linked to Marseille and Roma. De Rossi wanting him at Roma because he wants uh, an athletic midfielder. And he certainly looks like that is in the clips as well. But there was no room to uh, fee. So if you know about Ismail Coney, please do get involved in the comments. Let me know what you think is a reasonable price for him should West Ham decide to go get him. But that's who we're being linked to. And it's not the only Canadian either because we're linked once again to Jonathan David. Now, because of the... The link to Jonathan David. I did my old Google. I say Google. Went on transfer market. Um, he's just he's he's twenty four years old. I assume this guy was like twenty eight or twenty nine because I feel like we've been linked to him for three or four years now. Every transfer window. It's not just the summer. Summer and January transfer window. I feel we are linked to Jonathan David. He's expected to leave Lille, but he's been expected to leave Lille for quite some time now. But I think his contract situation means he's likely to leave this summer. 19 goals last season in the league. 24 goals in the season before. I've still yet to see him play. But he scores goals. So later this week when I'm tuning into Copa America, I might try and catch the next Canada game so I can watch Coney and Jonathan David. But someone we're being linked to. And again, get your thoughts in the comments below if you have an opinion on Jonathan David. Is he the man we need to be the striker at West Ham next season? Now... If you recognise that buzzing noise, either you're a female that likes to enjoy yourself or you're one of the 10 million men that have enjoyed Manscaped so far and you recognise the noise of the Lawnmower 5. 
Gentlemen, can I point you in the direction of Manscaped where you can get 20% off using the code HAMMERSCHAT20. You can feel the buzz and look at the impact as this thing takes off all your pubes, reduces nicks and it's waterproof so you can use it in the shower and comes with a very handy torch as well as a satisfactory buzz. It's time for the summer, it's time for the beach so make sure you're not the guy that looked like the one in the kilt last week when he flushed the crowds in Germany before getting the plane home this morning. That's if he stayed for all three games, that is. We'll discuss that later on. But if you'd like 20% off at Manscaped, plus free shipping worldwide, just head over to the website, links in the description below, and use the code HAMMERSCHAT20, all one word. You don't need any capitals. You'll get 20% off absolutely everything. But I can promise you, the Lawnmower 5, it's a good investment. I might have to get the Weed Whacker soon, though. For the first time, I discovered a hair in my ear. I had to get the... The tweezers, not good. Gonzo invested in the weed whacker ages ago, which does your ears and your nose. And I mocked him for it because I wasn't that old. I said, I don't have that problem yet. And he, he laughed back at me. But he didn't speak, he just laughed. Basically said, just you wait. I've dealt with it. But I've got a potential problem on the horizon. Uh, West Ham might as well with the transfer budget. We'll discuss that on Wednesday. Who have we got next? Next up, well, actually, we've got Tim Stiden. Tim Stiden is at Euro 2024. And quite frankly, good. So he should be. I'd like him to be. Perhaps he should be at Copa America watching these Canadians. But nevertheless, Stiden is back in his motherland on a little scouting mission. And I hope he's enjoying it. There's been plenty of talent on show. It's my favourite thing about the Euros. Well, it's certainly not the results anyway, is it? But just discovering new players, players standing out you've never heard of, watching players you've heard of but you've never seen play. I think that's the best thing about the Euros for me. Hopefully, Stiden can pick up one or two players and bring them back to West Ham. Now, moving on to a player who's still at the Euros, which obviously isn't a Scotsman, is Adam Losek. Now, you'll remember him. We got linked to him when he was at Sparta Prague and obviously the Kutinski connection there as well. And apparently, Thomas Suchek has said that this is the next best thing to come out of that country. But he went to Leverkusen, um, unchallenged really, nobody else really bid for him. It's never really quite worked for him there. He's had his moments, he's had his some minutes, but he's never nailed down a starting spot. I've seen him a little bit last season for Leverkusen. I remember one game I watched, it was at the end of the season. He got a hat-trick of assists. I think it was against Frankfurt, it might have been Freiburg. I'm sure it was against Frankfurt. He got a hat-trick of assists, um, played... Started against Georgia uh, the other night. I thought he was good before he got substituted. Not as good as Sufal and Suchek, but I thought he looked dangerous for them, actually. And obviously, they've got a key game coming up later on this week as well. So, one to keep an eye on. Possibly, Tim Steiden was involved in bringing Hlosek to Leverkusen. We'll never really know who scouts him and stuff like that. But I think it feels quite... I think it's plausible. If somebody said to me, Steiden was the one that wanted... Losek at Leverkusen, I believe you. I've got no reason to say that's a lie. So, yeah, fair. So maybe he was involved in that. The price is around £50 million, which feels fair for a 22-year-old who's got a lot of potential but hasn't lived up to it in Germany as well. Is a striker slash left winger, so an interesting prospect. So when you think about what we're trying to acquire this summer, it feels low cost, good profile, positions that we could do with as well. So I wouldn't rule this one out completely, although it feels a little bit of a rehashed rumour, and it is, it doesn't mean it's lacking credibility. Now moving on to Sule of Juventus, who we've also been linked to quite a bit. Now the price tag is now £30 million, which has apparently made it a little bit more appealing to West Ham and the transfer a little bit more likely. Perez of Udinese and Sule of Juventus, the centre-back and winger respectively, these rumours are just not going away. Some rumours come and go pretty quickly, like the Raheem Sterling one, like the Thomas Suchek to Real Madrid one. But these ones ain't going anywhere. It makes you think there's something in it. But the, the interesting thing for the majority of this reporting is it's coming out of Italy, which may add credibility to it, may make it a little bit more suspicious. That's up for you to decide. I'm just telling you what the transfer rumours are. Now, moving on from potential incomings. We've been linked to some other players, but we'll leave them for another video. The latest on Max Kilman is apparently our second bid has been rejected, but we're going to go back with the third one. And it's expected that that one might be the one that gets done. I think Wolves are waiting for a third one and we're expected to put a third one in. But at the minute, Max Kilman looks more off than on. And Wes Fodringham has his medical this week. Supposedly. 
I'm pretty sure he does. But I'm not going to put him in the title. There's no way of bothering him in the thumbnail of the title. I've had my row. I've learnt my lesson. I will not make up rumours that we're signing Wes Fodringham anymore and using him as clickbait. I still argue it's anti-clickbait, but that's the latest. I never made that up, Wes Fodringham. Anyway, moving on. Aston Villa have had an inquiry rejected for Lewis Orford. Now, this one's by Extra Time Employee. There's a bit of a contract situation going on with Lewis Orford. We haven't been able to get him tied down. The offers haven't been too attractive. And it's sort of re-Soxford-itis here, where obviously the club got their fingers burnt with the re-Soxford contract. We gave him a decent wage for someone of his age back then, and it never really worked out. Um, Oxford didn't work out at West Ham. And it feels like since then, almost every youngster has paid the price for us getting it wrong with re-Soxford whenever they've wanted a new contract at West Ham. And I think sometimes what the player feels he's worth is not what the club feel they're worth. And it, it, it happens a bit too often. And I know people say, yeah, but what youngsters left and gone on to do good things, that's not... The argument here isn't whether they're good enough or not. The argument here is that we struggle to retain players that we want to retain at the academy. Now, there's two youngsters in the under-21s I've been excited by since seen him play for the under-18s, and that is George Earthy and Lewis Orford. I'd be gutted if Orford went. I think he will make it at West Ham. Uh, he's the one I've always been confident on since seeing him live for the first time. The way he just dictated the tempo from the middle of the park, physically looks capable of playing at senior level as well, but just the way he moves the ball about in the centre of the pitch, he reads the game, gets about the pitch really well, t- tough in the tackle, set-piece taker, there was a lot to like about Lewis Orford when I first seen him play. So he's the one I've always thought had the best chance of going on and making it at West Ham out of that team that went on to win the, the Youth Cup and win the league that season. Now, obviously, Earthy's kind of gone on and done that. Mubama's kind of gone on and done that as well. They, they've played for the first team and they've had a few appearances between them. But Orford's still the one I'm most confident in. I'd be gutted if he left. And I think, as a club, you must get a little bit of a clue when Aston Villa come knocking for your player. It's got to be a little indicator that perhaps maybe that is someone we should be keeping an eye on. Obviously, he's been represented England over the summer as well. I'd be gutted if he went, and I hope we can get this contract situation resolved. Now, for one, I don't believe we will resolve. And I'm putting this at the end, because I could be wrong. Okay, I'm confident I'm not. I'm confident I'm right with this. But I'm putting it at the end, and I'm not putting it in the thumbnail of the title. So sometimes people will be accused of making things up for clickbait. So if you don't put in the title in the thumbnail, I don't think you can be accused of clickbait because no one's clicking on it to hear it. It's not advertised. So I'm putting it at the end. I believe, and I strongly believe, Ben Johnson will be leaving West Ham. I believe he's signing for another Premier League club. I don't know who. I don't know who he's signing for. I've seen he's been linked to quite a few clubs, and I think Ipswich is the main one. But I don't know where he's going. However, I strongly believe Ben Johnson will not be signing a new contract with us for various reasons, but the biggest reason being just lack of game time, how the club have treated him over the last few years. And lack of game time has meant that he's going to go elsewhere. Now, the West Ham did offer him contracts. They haven't been suitable. And he's he decided to, to leave West Ham and go somewhere else and start afresh and a new challenge and best of luck to him if it's true like I said this could be wrong my information could be wrong here that's why I'm not benefiting off it if you like because the in the know stuff isn't something we tend to do here I try my best to verify some things if we hear something I'll ask a couple of people to see if it's true or anything I just don't say in videos before I put it out I just talk about it because the in the know stuff it's not what we do we are a fan channel we discuss what other fans are discussing with their friends we just do it via video form and then we've got the comment section but this one's one that i feel confident is going to happen and it's a shame really i think it's a shame how it's come to an end really and he feels like he's had to leave the club and it's not a nice thing um flim downs has been linked to southampton as well 12 million is the price tag which seems really low for a player that when you're looking to offload a player, I understand that you maybe got to sell them on the cheap a little bit. Like Danny Ings, right? If we had to practically give Danny Ings away, I'd get it because we're wanting his wages off the books. Vlasic, Anderson, we've had to sell them cheap because we want to move them on. With Downs, we might want to move them on per se, but I don't think it's a necessity. 
But you've got the buying club in Southampton who are just desperate for him. We've got the power when it comes to negotiating for Flynn Downs here because Southampton are completely desperate for him. And it's no secret. They've been very clear that Flynn Downs is a priority for them this summer. He was absolutely fantastic for them last season. and He played a huge role in them getting promoted. There's no reason that we need to sell Flynn Downs cheap or quickly. Obviously, the Edson Alvarez injury is there. The reports from Mexico are that it's not a serious one. And they think he might even come back before the end of the tournament should Mexico advance. So they're quite optimistic it's not too bad a hamstring injury. But even discarding that for a second, we, there's no pressure on us to sell. And we can take our time with this Flynn Downs thing. Obviously, people go back to what I mentioned at the start. Sale transfer budget, maybe we're pressured. But 12 million, I'd be very disappointed if we only managed to get 12 million for somebody who, in his last two seasons in the league, has been widely touted as one of the best centre midfielders. That's what we've bought. We bought one of the best centre midfielders from Swansea. He's gone to Southampton and been one of the best centre midfielders. So, two seasons in a row now. Obviously, the one in the middle is in the Premier League. So two seasons in a row in the Championship, Flynn Downs has been one of the best centre midfielders. That that's worth a lot of money. We should not be selling him for twelve million. It should be far closer to twenty million than twelve. Should we decide to sell him? I think he'll go this summer, and I think it will be to Southampton. And it's probably the best thing for him because he knows he walks into that midfield at Southampton, possibly captain material. I'm not. I'm not sure. I, I don't know enough about Southampton to say that, but. He's a key part and he will play week in, week out in the Premier League next season at the Saints. So I think it'll be the best thing for him. But for West Ham, I'll tell you what isn't the best thing. Selling him for only £12 million, that would be really bad business. We'd get our money back. We won't have lost any money. But there's potential to make a profit on a player that hasn't really worked out for us. That's good business. Anyway, there you go. I'm going to wrap it up and disappear. I'll be back tomorrow with something. And I'll be back on Wednesday with the transfer budget video. Just give Gonzo's one a bit of breathing space. Plus, England play tomorrow. So, I don't want to get that video getting crushed when it's one bit. I'm looking forward to discussing. Now and again, a topic comes along. You think, can't wait to discuss that. And I've got that with the transfer budget. Because I'm really calm. But I'm looking forward to discussing why. I'm really calm. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this one, do drop a like on the Sky New Round here. If you'd like to hear my thoughts on Scotland going out the Euros, that's why it's in the bin. It's it's not real. Well, it is real. It's a real shirt in a real bin. It's a prop. It's just a prop. Background stuff. Try to make someone smile. Um, but if you'd like to hear my thoughts on Scotland going out the Euros, I put the link in the description below. It's on Patreon, but you do not need to be a patron to go and watch it. Anyone can go watch it. Just click the link and the video's there for you to click on and watch if you want. I'll give my thoughts a little bit on the defeat to Hungary, but also more around getting knocked out the Euros and sort of Steve Clark as manager for anyone interested. Anyway, I'll catch up with you tomorrow.